Welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk about an XP farm for those lower level characters or brand new descendants that you unlock. I decided to unlock one of the descendants through a little bit of coin I got, I think through the battle pass. I'm not sure. I can't even remember buying it. So I went and I unlocked Freyna. Now, Freyna's level 14. 20 minutes ago, she was level 1. I got from level 1 to level 14 in 20 minutes without really having to do anything at all except just kill a few enemies that are running right at you in a horde mode and that is based in kingston so we are going to go over to kingston here and you can see that right here right next to the spawn in grand square there is a thing called special operation defend albion resource so if we go over here right now so this is a 21 wave mission where every wave enemies get more in numbers and harder to kill but for the very first seven levels, it is completely trivial and easy. You spawn into this match made with three other people. So there's four people all together. And it's basically two waves, one from the left, one from the right. If two go right, two go left, you pretty much sorted them fine. I was just using my SMG and killing them as they were running towards me because basically what's going to happen is they're going to run towards the objective to try and blow it up. You just need to kill them before they get there. At rank 7, you get your rewards or at least some of the rewards here and you will be able to choose to continue or abort. You could probably get to level 10 quite easily as a new level 1 character. I just wanted to stop so I could see what I got and recorded this mission and stuff. It is very, 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 very easy. One thing I would suggest you try to do when you do this is make sure your mastery rank's not nearly at the level up. You won't be able to actually go to the next mastery rank, which means that it will keep popping up on your screen telling you that your mastery rank is ready to go and it was highly annoying. Any XP you get still goes to the next mastery rank, but it's just annoying to have it popping up on screen. So if you can avoid that, do that. In terms of weapons, I would go with something close range like a submachine gun or a handgun. Something fairly long range like an assault rifle or a scout rifle. Scout rifles are quite powerful. And just in case, take like a shotgun with you because as you get further through and you fight bosses, you want a shotgun that can just absolutely obliterate them. At wave 7, you will fight a boss. And the boss is basically that one that spawns with the three orbs above their head. And then you have to kill all the orbs, do some damage, kill all the orbs, do some damage. Fairly straightforward and easy. And with four people, not very hard at all. Now, one thing you can do, and I don't suggest you do this because it's not the way I like to play, is that you can literally AFK in there. If you are a level one character and you've got a few other people on your team who are like level 30-ish, which is what I had on mine, you can stand still and every kill they get gives you XP. I wouldn't do this because I think it's unfair, but let's just say, for instance, you know, like the first two or three waves where it's not going to be anything but easy for those higher levels. You could just stand there and get the XP. I don't know whether killing them yourself gives you more XP, but that's just what I was doing. I was just running up and killing them because it's really not that hard. I got all my abilities unlocked. and got them all to rank two just from one 20 minute mission, which I could have carried on to do more. So it's definitely, definitely worth looking into if you want to level up new characters. I don't know about the XP return for someone who's say higher than level 20, but I feel like even if you were like 20, 25, you'd still be able to get one or two ranks from like a wave 10. And then I think beyond like 30, 35, you probably get one rank per 21 waves. But I think it's definitely worth going for because also as well, you get a lot of rewards in terms of gold. Once you get to wave seven, you get 19,000 gold. If you get to wave 10, it's 50,000 gold, 110,000 at wave 14. 480,000 at wave 18 and 700,000 coins at wave 21. Now you're probably gonna have to be at the higher end of the levels to do wave 21, but a lot of characters cost somewhere between like 500,000 and 900,000 gold to research. So this is gonna be a very easy way just to spike out some gold to get your descendant whenever you need to research them. And you also get amorphous material patterns, which at each level you get an increasing chance. So at wave 7, you get a 30% chance of getting a material pattern 4. At wave 10, you get a 50% chance of getting a material pattern 5. 50% for 4 on wave 14. 80% for pattern 5 on wave 18. And 50% and 25% for 4 and 5 respectively when you get to wave 21 and you get multiple of them you get two of them so definitely worth 
grinding out in my opinions and those amorphous material patterns are different things that you can get like blueprints for weapons and materials and stuff that you need for other things there's blueprints in there that you can get that are ultimate where you get a three percent chance of getting them so you definitely want to be grinding this as soon as you possibly can if not for xp and quick levels to get these materials and that's about it i hope this helped if you're looking to level up very quickly this is the way to do it i haven't found anything else in the game worth doing outside of this thank you for watching i've been eating now you guys have been awesome